What's up game devs? Today we're gonna talk about storing game data with player prefs and a few tips and tricks to get the best out of this cool Unity feature. After this tutorial, you'll be able to store some of your game data such as your player's name, his position on the map, the game settings or even a high score in a real quick and easy way. Let's start from the basics though. What is player prefs? The official documentation says stores and accesses player preferences between game session. This means we can store some data that will not be deleted when the game is closed. Instead, it will be persisted between game sessions. Take note, albeit you can use them from mobile apps and they totally work, player prefs are deleted if the app is uninstalled and you won't find them back even if you install the same app immediately after. Keep that in mind if you're a mobile game developer. Before jumping right into Visual Studio to write some code, we should have a look at what we're going to use. If you already know the drill and you just want to see some live action, feel free to skip the video to the minute listed here. For everyone else, let's start with the Q&A. How is the data stored? Well, PlayerPrefs uses a key value system, which means you can define a string, that will be your key, and it will be matched with a value. Beware. Data is saved unencrypted in a file in the file system of the device and in a well-known location. At some point, a user of your game can read and modify the stored values, hence it's not really for passwords or critical data of your application. If it's an offline single-player game where cheating just ruins the fun, you could even store a high score in player press. But in an online game or even multiplayer game, you will never let the players cheat on their high score especially if there's a public ranking. On the other hand, being so easy to locate and read helps in debugging. But how can I use player prefs on my game? Well, player prefs is a class that offers some static methods that you can call with the simple notation playerprefs.methodName. You can access them from every part of your code, which makes this feature really, really handy. Just make sure on top of your file you include it using Unity Engine. The library offers methods to read and write data, save, delete, and check if a given key has a stored value, regardless of the value itself. As we just mentioned, all you have to do is to assign a string key to a value that can either be an integer, a float, or a string. In case you just want to store a true false boolean value, a common convention is to just use an integer and save the value of 1 if it's true and 0 otherwise. With this simple structure, you can also save more sophisticated objects, such as a vector tree, if for example you're looking for storing the last position of your character. To do that, you can think of a vector tree as tree coordinates expressed in float numbers. I'm sure you already figured out how to proceed from here. You can save your x, y, and z as three separate float values and create a new vector tree every time you read the tree coordinates. A smart and less error-prone way to use prefs is to avoid directly putting a string in your setting at methods. Instead, use constants. You can create a class that declares public static read-only strings that you can use then in your code. This gives you several advantages, such as autocomplete of your keys, easy refactor if you want to change the name of a key rather than changing it manually in each file, Visual Studio renames variables automatically, easily find where that key is used in your code, and last but not least, avoid potentially time-consuming errors when, for example, you just misspelled a key and you don't get why a value is not read or written properly. Yeah, you get that. Bugs. Do I need to call playerprefs.save every single time I save a player pref? Well, yes, but actually no. As long as the application is running, your player prefs are not actually persisted in the file system, but they are preloaded and remain in memory, so that the game can more quickly read and write. They are finally persisted only when the game is closed regularly or you stop the execution in your editor. However, if your game crashes unexpectedly, you might lose the data you saved during that session. That's something you might want to avoid. As long as playerprefs.save is not called too often in your code, for example inside an update method, that will be bad, you can stay on the safe side and use it if need by. For example, 
if the position of a player is saved upon reaching a checkpoint, or if this happens after hitting a save button, it could be a good practice to also manually persist your player preps. Long story short, it's not strictly required, but with a reasonable usage, it's an additional safety layer you should take into consideration. With that said, let's jump into some live action. To begin with, we can set the resolution to a horizontal one, and we can add the basic elements such as a background and the player. If we reset the transform, you can see that the player goes behind the background. That's most likely a sorting layer issue. You can easily fix that by either declaring a new sorting layer or just making sure that the background is on zero and the player has a higher number. We can just put one here and there you have it. Next up, since we want to save the player's position, we're going to need a canvas with a text so we can see what we saved. We can just add the text here. The canvas will be added automatically with the event system that we just handle the buttons and the inputs. Let's give some style to the text. It will be our save position 00. zero. We can make it stick to the top of the screen, center and bigger. Okay, now we can see it. Next, as we said, we want to have two buttons. One will be our save button, control D to duplicate, and load button. This should also be renamed to position text. We can now position our button, just double click on the save button. It will focus on the button because of the canvas different resolution. We can now select both, put them on the button, load on the left, and save on the right. We maybe also want to change the text. This is save, and that's load. The last thing we need to add here on the hierarchy is an empty game object that we will call game controller. This is because we want to store the game controller script. We can now add some logic. Let's start with the player movement. A basic way to do that is with a rigid body 2D and player movement script. Our script will be fairly easy. So we can start with a private float speed, that would be 5. Private rigid body to D, a reference to our rigid body. And a private vector to movement. Our start function will just make sure that our rigid body reference is not null. We can do that with get component rigid body 2D. With that, you can even avoid adding the rigid body from the inspector because it will be automatically taken by get component. This only works if there's only one instance of rigid body, but that's actually our case. Next, in the update, we want to read the input. So our expected movement will be a new vector 2 and the x will be input dot get axis horizontal and the y input dot get axis vertical. Like I said, it's fairly easy. Next up, update reads the input and fixed update that's the physics part, so RB that move position, sorry, RB. We're gonna start from the current position plus movement multiplied by your speed. And to make sure it's not faster on 
faster computers, we add time dot fix delta time. We save and that's our player movement logic. At this point, we can jump back on Unity and add some script to our game controller. In this case, we're gonna need something from the inspector. So serialize field. First of all, a reference to our text. And if you see, it doesn't appear here in the autocomplete. That's probably because you need to add using unity engine that UI and now you can see that text appears. This is our position text and we need a reference again serialized field private transform. This will be our player. Let's jump after the start for a moment. We want to create a save function so public void save this will be used by our save button. If we want to save the position, like we said, we need to save a float for the X, a float for the Y. So pair prefs dot set float. Let's call it position X and give it the value of player dot position dot X. But hey, we use the string here. We don't really like to put strings in the set float. How can we do that? We can go back to the editor, create a new C sharp script, prefs, and now we can add the constants here in this pref file so that we can take all the advantages we already mentioned. So that's not a mono behavior, that's a simple class. We want to declare a public because it has to be accessible from everywhere. Static because it has to be prefs dot name of the object. Read only. You never want to change a prefs key. And finally, string because hey, it's a string. Like we said, position x. Here we can put whatever we want because at the end of the day, we're gonna just say prefs dot position x but to make it consistent we can just add this position x here let's do the same for position y always make sure the text here is unique and you don't have two text is the same here and now we can repeat the procedure this time with position y that takes pair.position.y. Easy. Now we saved our position. We probably want to load it. Public void load. The idea is the same. So we're gonna read the values from position x and position y and put them back to player.position. So we can instantiate a float x that would be player prefs dot get float. This time we can easily do prefs dot position x and we're fairly sure that the value written here will be the same coming from here. We might also want to add a zero as a default value and repeat for the y. Now that we have the coordinate, we can just say player.position equals to new vector2. With x and y. And that's our load function. The final responsibility of the game controller is to make sure that the position text currently displays the saved position. We can do that with a void update UI method. I kind of like this notation with this arrow here in case we just want to 
write one line and this will be position text the text equals to position and now to make a string interpolation we can add a dollar sign here and say that our position is curly braces player dot position dot x curly braces again and player dot position dot y I kind of like string interpolation because it avoids all the string plus something plus string. We did that in a function because we want to update our UI in two different places. First of all, when our game starts, we want to see the save position. And when we save the position, we also want to update the UI to reflect our new position saved. And something else we want to do at the start is to call load. So our player will be automatically placed on the save position as soon as the game starts. Our final mission is to put the logic we just wrote in our scripts to our game. So we need to put the references in the game controller, that is the player position and the position text. And also add the onclick listener to our buttons. So we can drag our game controller here because the game controller has the save function. So game controller, save. Same for the load button. Game controller, and load. And that's it. We can finally play around. And wait, is our character falling down? Okay, that's gonna be our rigid body. It's set to dynamic, so it is affected by gravity. We need to set to kinematic, so we can move around. And yeah, that's much better. Save our position. It is displayed here. And if we keep moving and hit load, it will go on our previous position. Something else is that if we move again, we stop the game, it resets. We play the game, and the player will be back on the save position because we added load method on the start function. And that's it for player prefs. Thanks a lot for watching this very long video until the end. If you enjoyed that, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified about new videos. And let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else to add about player prefs or just in case you have any question. See you soon!